Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us here in the studio. Uh, I really hope it's a really inspiring and nourishing hour for you, hour or so. Um, before I get painting today, I have just a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, I have one spot left in my Italy workshop. It's May 13th through the 20th this year, 2024. So you could join us in Florence, beautiful Florence, Italy for a very um, non-touristy, intimate workshop. It's going to be great. Um, go to artensity.org to register if you're and to, just to check it out to see that. Um, also, I posted some new work on my Etsy shop just the other day, just this morning actually, including some florals, some animals, and um, a couple new landscapes as well. So yeah, check it out. So there's some good stuff. The, the animals, are, some of them are on the larger side, so they're a little bit more expensive, but um, I still think they're really reasonable. So. Um, okay, and let's see what else. The My uh, flower bouquets and pastel workshop is still on sale right now. So check that out at um, paintinglessonswithmarla.com. And um, it's really been fun to see everyone just diving into this really luscious subject. And it's such a perfect time of year for it because so many of us are still inside pining for our gardens and can't wait so uh, in anticipation of that at least we get to paint some flowers so it's really um, great to see everyone digging into that and um, and my my last thing that I want to talk about is year six of monthly pastel painting lessons online I'm just about wrapping up year six and so a little little tease there, and um, we've really got um, an extra special lineup for next year. But I do have a couple projects that I need to fill out. And so if you guys have any requests, any fabulous ideas for something that you want to see me um, talk about, teach you about some subject, it could be Maybe you need to know a little bit more about composition, um, you know, whatever. Just if you have an idea, pass it along. You can go to my website and go to support at paintinglessonswithmarla.com and contact us there. Um, you can also, if you're in the Facebook group, you can um, message me there too. Um, okay. All right, I guess that's that's all for announcements today. Nothing left to do but paint. So I get to stop procrastinating. Oh, one, one other thing I did want to do before I get painting today is I wanted to show you, so I kind of pre-selected some sticks today. I don't always do that, but I did today. And as you can see, interestingly enough, there's only one white stick, and I'll probably use it even at that pretty sparingly. Um, so, um, and I also think that this is a really just sort of charming, simple, kind of humble subject carnations in a little jam jar. Uh, and I like that, that type of thing. It just goes to show that you don't have to go far afield to find something really compelling and beautiful to paint. And these little floral bouquets are so perfect because, um, yeah, you can just, your garden, if you've got one that's blooming, the grocery store, anything, um, or um, even, even, even if your, your flowers aren't real, <laughs> you can paint them. All right. And I want to keep this really simple. So I just started out here today with this basically a square. That's what this jar is. I'm going to worry about the ellipses a little bit later as I get into it. Up here is the top of that, the, the top flower. And then I'm going to come in and where are, where's the, where are these stems? So just getting in uh, really, really, really simple what, what I need here. And I do love how this guy is the angle of it and it's coming through here so we've got that and then 
Also, this water line here is also important to me because I, 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 and that's something to think about when you're doing these kinds of things. I think the water line and that refraction in the water line is pretty interesting. So um, I, I never fill the, the um, water up to the top so that I always have some sort of line here that's, that's fun to paint. And these guys in here. And then I'm going to get this, this the, just the overarching shape of the flower to begin with. And then this one's sticking up here. And that's kind of it for that. Just getting these shapes in and where they're going to sit. This one's maybe a little higher, and this one's sitting there. Yeah, so that's good. good. I better put my hair back, get in trouble. Uh-oh. Oh, well, I need, I need a hair band. Sorry. I just bought some more too. Um, okay, so while he's getting those, I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, a, a little bit. Um, see, I have in mind something. I wanna, I wanna put a little bit of color in here. Just a little, I'm gonna sneak a little color in here. Just, just sneaking that in there. Um, thanks, Kevin. Sorry. <laughs> Don't want to make anybody be my gopher. Sometimes. Yeah. Desperate times. Sometimes. All right. So it's um, one thing about doing these flowers. I'm all. I'm, it's surprising how um, how many neutrals are are needed to get these to work. This might not even be quite dark enough. We'll see as we get going here. And so this one is almost entirely in shadow. And I'm gonna There's a bud right here in the front. I'm not sure I'm gonna try to do that. I don't know that it needs it. Stick with that for the moment. I'm going to get a little bit of um, I see a little bit of brighter yellow kind of in the center in here. All right, that's good.
Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to start to get the background going. Um, and it's always a nice opportunity to get um, to cut back into the um, contour that you've got going. Let's see. I'm going to come down to this. Do you know what kind of stick you used for the stems? Um, what do you mean? Oh, what color, what brand? Oh, it's, it's a really dark um, green, and it's, I don't know what brand it was, actually. Yeah, I know I need to go a little darker. I kind of figured I was going to need to. Let's see. And then am I thinking I'm thinking this for the this cast shadow here. And I'm going to do this for this. Um, where'd my head? I had a I'm missing a piece of paper. I'm missing the reference. Oh, oh. Never mind. <laughs> it's right in front of me. Oh boy. oh boy, I usually have it in my hand in the oh boy. Funny. So generally speaking, Marla, um you're sticking with you you usually don't know what stick you're using. I usually when I pick something up, I kinda know what it is. You know what it is, okay. Yeah, cool. I do. So um there's another question about the whitest of the white that you're using there. I don't have any white on here yet. Okay. There's no white yet. It might appear as though it's there's white on here, there's not. It's a very light blue. Oh, maybe I read the question a little wrong. Is there a brand of pastel that's the whitest of the white that you know of? You know, um, Schmincke has a really great white. <laughs> Surprising. I don't, I don't buy a lot of Schmincke anymore, but they have a really good white. Um, that's what Leanne said. She mentioned that in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Cool. 
one. So I'm just trying to get this in real simple. Um, Right. Now, this cast shadow in the reference is not quite this dark, but I'm going to put it in a little bit darker. just for funsies right now. Some of this fun stuff on the, and then um, Does it that fun refraction thing? Okay, I'm getting somewhere. I want to play with this a little bit, the color in here. And now I'm going to go over the background with something a little grayer. And the reason for that, you'll see in a minute. I hope. Because <laughs> now we get to turn the lights on a little bit. Yep. Now, this is white.
And I want to now, I'm going to come in that background again. Theme a little bit. Still think some some of it needs to be even a little bit darker. It's kind of surprising. Look at this. Okay, so now let's see, get some lights on. Where am I? Where am I? I want to. What did I see that I wanted to do? Oh, here. I wanted this. And now I'm going to come in with um, a couple things on the jar. of the jar down here. So I just want to make a good mark there. And I want a more of a lost and found edge right here. Maybe on this side, not as much. So something like that. Oh, 
bit more of the character of the these guys. And then I think I'm going to get this a little bit more blended like that. Now I'm just going to play with these petals a little bit. And that crinkly edge of them. There's a couple things I missed out on, um, some on the contours, but um, overall, I think it's pretty, pretty sweet. Um, I wish this was a little straighter. Just got to make those marks. Just kind of got to go for it a little bit. Um, character going. But yeah, I like it. It's pretty nice. It's simple. What time is it? Do I have time for another one? Oh, I think so. It's about 12.30. If you want to, yeah, can you give it a try? Should we give it a try? Do we have questions before I do that? or? Uh, what paper are you using? This pastel mat. You've been using that a lot. Lately. Yeah, it's my fave. Let's see. Let's see, I want this to be a little bit more in shadow. I, I have, I don't have as much negative space as I would like between the, the flowers right, right in here. But I think it's working pretty well. Okay. All right. I have another one picked out. So we'll do that. This one down here, just people to see. Um, this next one I might use an alcohol wash with. Let's see, um, so I don't have the I don't have the reference fo photo for that one. So they're going to have to just be. We could screencast. Do you, yeah. All right. Or uh, if you um, if you lower, but you're doing it from the uh, from the painting. No. Oh, okay.
Got it. Yeah, that's it. I have this one up here because um, there were some similarities to the one I did today with that. Okay. Well, this one's a little different. People see it? Here, I'll take this one down so it's not confusing. You know, you can you can lift that up if you wanted. Um, I think with these these little bouquets, the kind of a big deal is to get what is what's the overarching shape that they're taking up, because it's really easy to kind of go off off the rails. Um, like if you want the whole thing in, you gotta okay that there's a, how big is the vase compared to the 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 flower the cluster of flowers. So in this case, this these flowers are pretty big, taking up uh, you know something something like this relative to this little pitcher, which is sitting here about yay. So it's really easy to get the pitcher too big and then not then you run out of space for the flower. So I'm gonna and I don't want to do that. So something in that vicinity. I think. And I'm always looking for, you know, how can I how can I do this simply? Now notice that this this very organic looking vase, I'm starting out with a real faceted kind of stroke to draw it in. Because it's easier to draw a straight line than it is to draw curved shapes. So I'm starting out like that. Um, all right, and um, think about this, what's the shape of this, uh, this foliage, of the greenery in here, Just super simple. And then the the flowers themselves, a lot of them are in shadow, a lot of it's in shadow. So, so they're more green than they are yellow in the shadow. There's some over here. And then they they get a little more um this kind of color. And then that cast shadow is pretty. Put in something like that. Think you know how 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 can I make it simple? If I can't see it simply, it, I, 
I can't, certainly can't paint it simply. So I'm always striving for that. Oops, I missed out on where that was. Something lighter with this. And then the, the little vase. Picture. And some yellow now. How do you decide to do an underpainting or not? Um, it, 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 sometimes I feel like the underpainting is just gonna um, help, help, me, help me find a way in. Sometimes it, it's a matter of, oh, I think an underpainting is gonna, um, yeah, it's just, I'm, you know, when I when I, when I'm starting a piece, I'm kind of strategizing. I'm kind of working it out in my head. What's is there is there a way to get me to the end that feels s simplest? And sometimes that that feels like it's an underpainting. And I have you know, so you, I I always want to have a few different um, approaches at my disposal so that I can figure that out. So I have some options. Okay. That's, you know, a nice simple start. All right. Yeah. Let's do underpainting. Or wash, I should say. This is a, another way of thinking about it. Now, this is going to give me some interesting edges right off the bat. It's going to go darker, um, and then it'll dry a little bit lighter than this. But already, it just, an underpainting, a lot of times it, it gives you also a, a, a sort of improvisation or spontaneity that you may not be able to get with just um, a more direct painting approach. And I like that because it's, see already look at how, it's already more interesting. And just to remind, um, that's 70% alcohol? Yeah. And move the, it so now it becomes like paint, can kind of move it around a bit.
You want to take it? Yeah, why not? Right. Speed the process up. Yeah, see, it's fun. Okay, Kevin's going to do his favor and <laughs> take it. And... Yeah, so um, you guys, if you're interested in Italy, um, the workshop is um, in based in Florence. We'll be taking a date trip to up to Fiosole, which is a lovely little town right up above Florence, beautiful views. And there's some old ruins. There's a monastery up there. So we'll be going up there one day. Our hosts, Ivan, Deborah and Ivano, um, are, they've done many, many, many um, trips to Italy. Um, I think this is going to be my seventh time, I think, sixth or seventh. And um, Deb, uh, Deborah and Ivano are from, from the States, but Ivano is native Italian. So you don't have to worry during the entire workshop. You don't have to worry about language at all. <laughs> Ivano takes us, um, takes care of all that. So it's really pretty neat. But in Florence, so many people speak um, English. So the, there's really, the language is, is not a real barrier there. So that makes it really easy and fun. So, cool. That was quick. Quick, quick, quick. That, is that the right spot, Bryce? Right, yeah. And before we end today, we could map both of them up. Sure, we can do that. Okay, first thing that occurs to me is to kind of cut around the contour of this and then go in there with some color in the flowers. Other than that, I. Th I, I kind of like it just without much else, um, which is pretty neat. It's really neat when that happens. Let's see, is this going to be? I think, I think so. So cool when go in here a little bit. What is this? This is what I was using, yeah. Little things in here. Which was the was it this that I used? And then mm. so after you do an underpainting um, and you apply the water or the alcohol, mm -hmm. does it matter? It if you apply the pastels light to dark or dark to light? It doesn't really matter. It's kind of what makes sense to you, I think. Um, Maybe we could put the hair back up. Oh, sure. <laughs> I 
should cut it. <laughs> I should just cut it. Um, I'm I'm thinking about it. So I have to cut it really short then because then it'll it has to be short enough. To... Yeah, if you can't put it up, if it's too short to put up, that could be problematic too. Yeah. I know. I have to decide. some other kinds of colors in here a little bit but I don't want to get too carried away and there's some nice light light greens there's some Yep. So I'm I'm liking the overall of it. I I'm not, you know, planning on doing a whole lot more to it. Mm, just Boy, greens are tricky sometimes. I'm not loving that that much, so I'm going to go back in and That's okay. And now for some Highlights.
see which one am which one did I use here? Is it that one? This one? This one. Um, I like this. <laughs> it's real um, simple. I like it when um, the the detail is suggested. It's not and it doesn't need anything more than that. Do you know what white you're using for the highlights? This is a piece of Terry Ludwig that was in a heart that he sent me cool. a long time ago. So I don't really know. It's nothing I bought. Okay, yeah, this is fun. Great, I'm going to leave it because I know I'm just going to, there's not really anything I'm going to do to, that's going to make this better. So just going to, I'm just going to, this turned out nice. I like the silhouette of the of the flowers. Flowers don't need anything more than that. Um, you know, you could you could get in there and play with the little little details of the flowers, but I don't think that that's necessarily gonna make it any better. Um, I mean, you you could play with some little things like that, but. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it really needs it. Let's put some croppers on these guys. So this one, um, you know, to me, feels a little heavy-handed compared to this one. Like I'm, um, I still like it, but there's a lot more product on it. Um, when you're doing the underpainting, it really does allow you to get quite a bit of, um, um, it really sets the, the pastel into the paper surface in such a way that it, it really allows you to um, kind of stay thinner. So yeah, this one's just simple and nice. And this one, let's go here, this one. This one's okay too. I like some of what's going on in the jar. I feel like this one's just me getting a little warmed up. <laughs> and that's, that's a, a lot of times that's the case. 
when I'm painting, when I have a whole entire day to just kind of get in my studio and just kind of riff, by the end of the day, I'm just, you know, rocking and rolling. Um, but sometimes I need a little, a little warm up. So yeah. All right, guys, make sure you head to the website and check out the new flower uh, bouquet and pastel workshop still on sale. And please, um, if you if you like watching our YouTube videos, please like and subscribe to and, and get notifications to our live streams and other videos that we do. So, yep, please um, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I hope it's nice wherever you are. It's still a little chilly and drizzly here in the Portland, Oregon area of the U.S. But so I hope the sun is shining where you are and I will see you at the easel next time. All right. Bye bye.